His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, following the passing of a number of members of the UAE Armed Forces while performing their training in Somalia. His Majesty prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of the deceased in eternal peace, grant the family solace and fortitude, and wish a speedy recovery to the injured. The Royal Court announced that His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa will receive the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabba Al Suba, upon his arrival to Bahrain on Tuesday. His Majesty King Hamid and His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Suba are scheduled to hold talks that will discuss the historical Bahrain Kuwait relations and the latest regional and international developments. The Royal Court welcomed the visit of His Highness Sheikh Mishal and is accompanying a delegation. Bahrain and Kuwait share close and historic relations due to the keenness of the leaderships of the two countries to support them in various fields for the benefit of their people. More in this report. The historical and fraternal relations between Bahrain and Kuwait have always been characterized by solidity and prosperity within the framework of the keenness of the leaderships of the two countries to develop strategic partnership at the various political, economic, social, cultural and media levels within the framework of the GCC Council and the keenness to strengthen joint Arab action and serve Arab and Islamic causes. The mutual visits between the leaderships of the two brotherly countries are a witness to the development and strength of relations in various fields. These relations have supported and developed cooperation to build on the achievements made at the bilateral level and at the GCC Council level, which also includes the political, economic and social aspects. The keenness to strengthen the common cause and the unified vision adopted by the two countries contributed to strengthening Kuwaiti-Bahraini relations, which was reflected positively on various levels and fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of condolences to the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, following the passing of several servicemen of the UAE Armed Forces as a result of a terrorist attack which took place in Somalia. The servicemen were targeted while performing training missions. His Royal Highness wished a speedy recovery for those who have been injured. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Vice President and Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Presidential Court of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nayan. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gadebia Palace. The cabinet extended its condolences to His Majesty the King and the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Bahrain citizens and the family of the fallen serviceman, Major Abdullah Rashid Al Noemi, who lost his life in a terrorist attack, along with several servicemen of the UAE, while carrying out his national duty in Somalia. The servicemen were targeted while performing training missions. The Cabinet also extended its condolences to the fallen servicemen of the UAE and wished a speedy recovery for those who have been injured. The Cabinet congratulated His Majesty the King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and Bahraini citizens on the 23rd anniversary of the adoption of the National Action Charter. The Cabinet commended the Kingdom's achievements following the adoption of the Charter, which has contributed to progress and development across all sectors. The Cabinet highlighted the importance of the Shield of Bahrain, a project Cobra Z aircrafts, which were inaugurated by His Majesty the King, as well as Bahrain's naval ship, the RBNS Kalibin Ali, which was inaugurated by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Both the project Cobra Z aircraft and RBNS Kalibin Ali are valuable additions to the BDF's combat readiness. The Cabinet emphasised the critical role these assets play in supporting the ongoing development and modernisation efforts of the BDF, enhancing its capabilities in performing its national duties. The Cabinet commended the outcomes of the third meeting of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council, co-chaired by His Royal Highness and the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. In this regard, His Royal Highness expressed gratitude to the Saudi Crown Prince for his contributions during the Council's meeting and the subsequent initiatives it's produced that promote integration between the two countries. The Cabinet added that the Council meetings have contributed to strengthen the strategic bilateral partnership, promote integration and foster cooperation to achieve prosperity and development for both countries and their people. This follows a report reviewed by the Cabinet, submitted by the Minister of Foreign Affairs.
Cabinet then discussed and approved the following memorandums. Memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the report submitted by the team responsible for researching aspects of the Katwa programme for home projects. His Royal Highness directed the relevant authorities to accept application from those who met the programme's legal requirements for eligibility for retirement pension. The Cabinet also approved the recommendation from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs that the National Audit Office conduct a review of aspects of the programme's registration and retirement procedures. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU between the Ministry of Interior and Sulwan Hospital to offer treatment programmes and educational courses. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU for cooperation between Bahrain and Kyrgyzstan in the fields of agriculture, livestock and fisheries. A memorandum by the Minister of Legal Affairs on the Legislative Plan for 2024. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs and the Government's response to three proposals and a law submitted by the Representative Council and a law submitted by the Shura Council. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects, outlining the Committee's completed tasks and assignments from January to December 2023, the accomplishments in infrastructure projects and housing services, and cooperation with the private sector in these fields. In addition, the Cabinet noted the following Ministerial reports. The outcomes of the participation in the 7th Abu Dhabi Dialogue Ministerial Consultation Meeting. The outcomes of the third meeting of the Bahrain Russia Intergovernmental Committee for Trade, Economic, Technological and Scientific Cooperation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed bin Salman Al Masalim, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, and the Shura and Representative Council Deputies, and the Heads of Committees at Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad highlighted the efforts of Team Bahrain comprising of the executive and legislative authorities, the private sector and civil societies, and the commitment to the Kingdom of Bahrain's development in line with the vision and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted the importance of furthering the Kingdom's accomplishments and development across various sectors, which reflects the essence of Team Bahrain and its successes. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad noted that the Kingdom's interests are at the forefront of the various efforts to achieve a better present and a prosperous future for the Kingdom and its citizens. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the development of the private sector and emphasised its importance as a significant driver of growth to contribute to supporting development efforts and to spur the creation of quality opportunities for Bahraini citizens. His Royal Highness expressed the Kingdom's determination to achieve its wide-ranging development goals aimed at benefiting citizens through numerous initiatives and plans. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad emphasised that this will be achieved through the determination of Team Bahrain from the various workplaces as it continues to turn challenges into successes through a passion for achievement. For their part, the Speaker of the Representatives Council and the Chairman of the Shura Council expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his commitment to supporting executive and legislative collaboration and integration and affirming his commitment to achieving the Kingdom's development to benefit Bahraini citizens. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, several ministers, and the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce, Samia Abdullah Nas, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the President of the International Tennis Federation, the ITF, David Haggerty, at Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's unwavering support to the Kingdom sports sector, which has yielded many achievements and successes at a regional and international level. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of further enhancing the sports sector's competitiveness, noting the importance of the sector in supporting Bahrain's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended the ITF's role in developing tennis globally. His Royal Highness also noted the General Sports Authority role in enhancing Bahrain's sports sector by hosting tournaments and competitions. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister emphasised the importance of developing the infrastructure of stadiums and sports facilities, as well as organising highly competitive tournaments that contribute to the development of various sports. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad highlighted the efforts made by the Bahrain Tennis Federation in developing tennis in the kingdom, noting the importance of creating opportunities that strengthen the sports industry in Bahrain. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, affirmed the importance of increasing partnerships and cooperation with leading international and regional sports organisations to further strengthen the sports sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness also noted the importance of strengthening the skills of young tennis players and preparing them to compete at higher levels to achieve the Kingdom's desired aspirations. For his part, the President of ITF expressed his appreciation for His Royal Highness's interest in promoting tennis in the Kingdom of Bahrain and supporting cooperation with the International Tennis Federation. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Chairman of the Bahrain Tennis Federation, Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, especially in endurance sports, which contributed to making a new achievement for Bahraini endurance sports. The achievement was represented by obtaining first place in the custodian of the Two Holy Mosques International Endurance Cup Championship for a distance of 160 kilometres. His Highness stressed that this patronage from His Majesty the King constitutes an essential element in the prosperity of Bahraini sports in general and endurance sports in particular. He praised the interest and support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the vision of the government to support Bahraini youth in sports events. His Highness also praised the support of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in light of His Highness's keenness to support all Bahraini foreign participations. His Highness added that endurance sports will always remain a symbol of affirmation of the high capabilities possessed by Bahraini youth. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the members of the Royal Endurance Team in obtaining first place in the tournament. The Royal Endurance Team made a new achievement for Bahraini sports with the Royal Team rider Hamad Isa Al Danahi achieving first place.
The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, the REHC High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 1 of 2024. According to the edict, the REHC High Committee will be reconstituted under the chairmanship of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the membership of His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Deputy Chairman. Sheikh Naif bin Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, member. Sheikh Michal bin Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, member. Yusuf Usama bin Hiji, member. Kamal Murad Ali Murad, member. Adnan Abdul Wahab Ishaq, member. Ali Habib Kasim, member. Khalid Hussein Taki, member. Taha Tafik Al Alalawi, member. Ahmed Yusuf Abdul Ghani, member. Said Yusuf Kunji, member. The term of the membership shall be three years. As part of the celebrations of the National Action Charter anniversary, the Bahrain National Charter Monument hosted a number of accredited ambassadors to Bahrain in the presence of the Minister of Public Affairs at the Royal Court, Dr Majid al Nuemi, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies, Dr Abdul Latif al Ziani, and a number of officials. Dr al Nuemi welcomed the attendees to the monument, which came at the initiative of His Majesty the King noting that the main exhibition is characterised by the use of multimedia to highlight political, economic and social stations, which demonstrate Bahrain's legacy and achievements. He added that it also contains the names of all those who voted for the Charter for 98.4%. Dr Alziani affirmed that based on His Majesty's strategic vision, the Charter represents the national desire of development and progress, adding that it strengthens the foundations of the nation through strong institutions and the rule of law. He noted that the comprehensive development process witnessed implementing laws that preserve the rights of individuals and groups in Bahrain, promoting equality and combating discrimination, ensuring equal opportunities, community solidarity and the effective inclusion of women in society and in legislative and executive bodies, and encouraging women's political, social and economic participation. The Director General of the Academy, Sheikh Munira bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, reviewed the importance of the Charter in Bahrain's history with the leadership of His Majesty the King, which increased reform and development in the Kingdom. She added that the Charter focused on respecting human rights and civil and political freedoms. She hailed the steps taken by Bahrain to promote gender equality, support the advancement of women and effectively integrate them into comprehensive development programmes. The attendees toured the main exhibition and hailed that as valuable information. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kuwait, Abdullah Al Yahya, in the presence of senior officials. The Kuwaiti Minister praised the bilateral brotherly relations and the development witnessed in various fields, affirming keenness to further enhance the relations to benefit both countries and their peoples. Dr Alziani congratulated the Minister on his new appointment and wished him continued success. He praised the bilateral historic brotherly relations and the cooperation in all fields. During the meeting, they discussed the close relations and ways to develop them in addition to reviewing a number of topics of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Gambians Abroad, Dr Mamandou Tangara. The Minister stressed the interest of Bahrain in strengthening bilateral cooperation in various fields, expressing his pride in the development that these relations have achieved in light of the mutual keenness to develop them and benefit the two friendly countries and peoples. The Gambian Minister expressed his country's keenness to develop the bilateral relations in the service of common interest wishing the Kingdom continued progress and prosperity. During the meeting, they discussed the close friendly relations and ways to develop them in addition to reviewing a number of topics of common interest. Information Minister Dr Ramzan bin Abdullah al Nuemi chaired the meeting of the Permanent Committee of the Gulf Radio and Television Festival, which was held in the presence of Director General of the Gulf Radio and Television Organisation, Madri bin Mubarak al Ghatani, and representatives of GCC member states. The meeting discussed preparations for the 16th edition of the festival, which will be hosted in Bahrain. 
They also discussed the organisational aspects related to the festival and the activities included in the festival's agenda include seminars, workshops and exhibitions specialised in radio and television production. The Minister stressed Bahrain's keenness to make the upcoming edition a significant one, especially since the festival is considered an important event in promoting media rapprochement and integration between the GCC countries. Dr Al Noemi noted the importance of this event as it creates a competitive atmosphere among the artists, creators, media production companies and official and private TV channels in the GCC, in addition to opportunity it provides to exchange ideas, expertise and experiences, which contributes to improving the artistic production of GCC countries and enhancing its ability to highlight the development witnessed by the member states at all levels. He expressed his appreciation for the efforts made by the Gulf Radio and Television Organisation in improving Gulf media cooperation and the strategies, plans and programmes it is implementing to develop young Gulf media competencies in a way that qualifies them to provide a valuable media message that represents the civilised renaissance of the GCC, wishing the organisation further success. The Director General praised the Kingdom's interest and support of the arts, culture and media sectors as one of the basic pillars of the Kingdom's efforts in the field of development. He stressed the appreciation of the organisation of Bahrain's efforts to ensure the success of every edition of the festival. The Southern Area Municipality Director General Engineer Isa Abdurrahman al and it confirmed the municipality's winning of the Gold Classification Award for Government Service Centres, Takim 4, came as a result of the remarkable development witnessed by the government services provided in the municipality. al explained that this achievement represents an incentive to exert more effort to develop all services provided by the Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture in accordance with the visions of His Majesty the King and the aspirations of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to develop government services. He pointed out that the award embodies the keenness of the Ministry in general and the Southern Area Municipality in particular to continue providing the best services to citizens, investors and residents. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Ado al Husaymi, expressed his sincere condolences to Bahrain and the UAE following the passing of an officer from the BDF and three members of the UAE Armed Forces and the injury of others as a result of being exposed to a terrorist act in Somalia while performing the duties. He expressed appreciation for the sacrifices made by the BDF and the UAE Armed Forces to maintain international security and stability and combat terrorism. The National Action Charter constitutes a milestone in the history of Bahrain due to the political, economic and social development it achieved, which placed Bahrain among the ranks of developed countries in terms of democracy, rights and reform. More in this report. The National Action Charter is a prosperous roadmap that's guaranteed stability and a prosperity for the Bahraini citizen within a comprehensive democratic project and a reform approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Charter has determined Bahrain's civilizational and historical identity, but the fundamentals of the states and the community shaped Bahrain's relations at the regional, Arab and international level and paved the way for the democratic march. It became the primary reference for the legislative authority and contributed significantly to supporting and strengthening legislative work through the foundations laid by the Charter at all levels. Today, the National Action Charter is considered the foundation of parliamentary life and democratic practices in the constitutional institutions of Bahrain, in light of the continuous royal support enjoyed by the legislative authority in its two councils, the Shura and representatives. The Charter gave the members of both councils wide scope to work honestly towards activating their constitutional tools to serve the nation and the citizen. The Ministry of Interior's ATP Challenger Tennis Tournament is set to take place in the Kingdom of Bahrain, featuring distinguished international participation with a large elite group of internationally ranked players. More in this report. The Ministry of Interior Bahrain Tennis Challenger Tournament is set to take place, featuring distinguished international participation with a large elite group of internationally ranked players. The results of the preliminary matches of the Ministry of Interior Bahrain Tennis Challenger Tournament saw Turkish player Yanki Erol defeating Russian player Peter Barr in the first match. In the second match, Portuguese player Gastão Elias emerged victorious over Marco Nikolic. 
The third match brought together British player Ali Habib and Serbian player Viktor Durasovic, with the latter emerging as the winner. It's my first time in Bahrain, so I don't know the weather, uh, uh, how it is normally. Uh, it's true that the past few days it was like really sunny and uh, so warm, but uh, it's okay. We just uh, It's a part of the work and we just uh, try to to just chill uh, inside where there is the the player um, the player room and we we just uh, relax and we are waiting when we have a spot to to practice first to warm up and then after of course waiting for for the game I'm third match on on court two so basically I have to I have to wait for two matches before me to end but I also heard that it's gonna be uh, some more rain maybe coming so let's see I'm playing my style almost all the time the same. Uh, I mean, it's the hard court season right now and uh, it's my favorite and I hope I can make a good result. Uh, every day, no matter if I'm more or less uh, stressed or tired or, or the guy I play, uh, as I said, it's, it's just about focusing on yourself and trying to adapt the little things. But yeah, I think everyone has their, their own rituals or yeah, things that they do every day. Uh, probably just see the ball better and um focus, stay in the moment, you know. Not really, I'm just trying to focus on myself and make sure I do all the right things. I mean, not not really, I'm more focusing on my game, like, like the opponent, so yeah, I'm just focusing on the practice and preparing for the match. All necessary arrangements have been completed to host a tournament at the tennis courts of the Public Security Officers Club. The Ministry of Interior has previously organised several tournaments which highlight its capability to host such international events in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Ministry of Interior Bahrain Tennis Challenger for 2024 has begun and we are all geared up for thrilling matches that lie ahead. Reporting for Bahrain International Television, Safiya al Hajri. Bahrain has witnessed thundery rain early this morning. The General Directorate of Traffic are called on drivers to be cautious during rainfall and to adhere to the specified speed while leaving a distance between vehicles and not to be distracted by anything, wishing for the safety of all. The Coast Guard also called on seafarers to take caution due to the high speed of winds at times. The high-profile World Government Summit 2024 kicked off in Dubai with the participation of more than 25 heads of state and government, 140 government delegations and over 85 international organisations, along with distinguished participation of thought leaders, experts and more than 4,000 attendees. Held under the theme Shaping Future Governments until February the 14th, the summit will discuss the future of mobility, artificial intelligence, AI and investing in uncertain times, among several other topics. The summit aims to enhance international cooperation and equip governments with innovative tools and insights essential for tackling the looming global challenges. This comes at a time when the world is experiencing an increase in violent conflicts and the near collapse of the global order. Around 25 strategic reports, in collaboration with global think tanks and academic and research bodies addressing global trends across key sectors, will be launched. In addition, 15 global forums focusing on strengthening and future planning in vital sectors will be organised in participation with international organisations and world tech companies to address challenges across the world. <laughs> 